Hey guys, this video is part two of dealing with anemia and early satiety. Uh, please disregard the appearance. Okay, just got from work and I'm tired, but I did promise to get this video out immediately. So here you go. It's going to be informative. Um, so I spoke about anemia in part one of this video where I spoke about the signs and symptoms, some of the symptoms that I left out. Um, besides extreme fatigue and low energy, difficulty focusing, um, there's also weird cravings that you might get for non-edibles, uh, from other people that I spoke to that also, you know, deals with anemia or suffered from it. Most people crave a lot of ice, eating ice, and others crave, um, like clay and stuff like that for me it was weird it was craving for like soap very weird i didn't eat it because i'm like you're not supposed to eat soap but why am i getting the craving very weird but you're not crazy it's one of the symptoms you crave non-edibles very 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 weird um so that's that with the anemia um with early satiety it is a condition where your stomach empties out slowly. Normally when you eat, the food is supposed to pass through your stomach. Once again, remember, our stomach is not the whole belly. Like, you know how everybody wanna have surfboard tummy, flat stomach, whatever. Your stomach is actually like this little pouch that's lo lo um, located in your upper right abdomen. So, that's where your stomach is really located. It's not the full package that we want to fly in our bikinis. So the food is supposed to pass through your stomach to go through the intestines and all of that digestive system. In my case, because my stomach empties out slowly, the food chills. Like, literally, the food will go down the esophagus to my stomach. Instead of just saying, excuse me, excuse me, just passing through, it just sits there. My stomach is like, hey, how are you? Pull up a chair. Let's watch Netflix. Because the food just sits there. And what happens, because the food is not passing as it should be, I get full. I feel full quickly. Like I can't eat anymore. And I also have gas in my stomach. That's like part of it. You have gas. Uh, I've had that. I've been dealing with this issue for years. I just never knew what it was called. From the time I was a baby, um, my mother said I was colicky. I was like, okay, you know, if you guys don't know what a colicky baby is, a baby that has a lot of gas, and those kids cry a lot because they're in pain. They're gassy. Um, so growing up, I could never eat much. And because I could never eat much, I was always on a smaller side, but I was petite, so I didn't look frail. I'm still petite, I'm 4'11". But I don't look frail. So because I didn't look frail, you know, I was able to pass along for others, except for my household. I'm from a Haitian household. They they thought I was too small. Um, but I was always on a smaller side because I was a small little petite package. And I could never eat much. Um, they would force me to eat, eat, eat these meals, and I can't eat a meal. So my mother was like, you know what, you're small, you don't like to eat, so if you're Haitian, you'll know like there's a medication that they like to give their kids to make them eat. It's called Sibokat. I think that's the way you pronounce it, Sibokat. So it's a syrup that's supposed to make, you know, someone who doesn't eat much to eat and sleep to gain weight. You know, it's a weight gaining journey. So I was on that weight gaining journey for a while as a child and I was not gaining much weight because I would sleep more than actually really eat. And if I would eat like around the age of 12 or so, if my eating picked up, it would be Hot Pockets. Never a real meal. Um, so I started to actually gain weight when I was like 19 or so 18 going on 19 because I had surgery and I was in the hospital like I went to the hospital and I had surgery um and I had um my appendix removed so that procedure you know usually not you're in a hospital for like two days but once again 
early satiety strikes as usual I could not eat they were pumping me with IV so I'm hydrated I'm in a city I'm sorry you're gonna hear random sounds but um <laughs> so I was low we ain't gonna do this I'm back and yes oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to edit this out. It's going to be music in the background. Please forgive me, you guys. I can't control it. We're just going to ignore it because Mr. Pimp Daddy Smack wants to keep playing his music and there's nothing I can do. But continuing on. So um, I was in the hospital. Usually after the procedure, you can, you know, go about your business, like go home after two days. But due to early satiety, that's striked again. I ended up being in the hospital for eight days, you guys. Eight days. Because I could not. I could not. Absolutely could not eat. When I'm sick, normally I can't eat anyways. If I'm stressed, I can't eat. If I'm depressed or upset, I cannot eat. So in this case, I was sick. I was in the hospital. They were pumping me with IV, so I was hydrated. But I could not eat. Doctor said, up. Uh, we can't let you go home until you begin to eat. Your potassium levels are low. We need to get your numbers up before we can let you go. <sighs> Remind you, around that time I was, what, 18? Yeah, 18 going on 19, but I was 18. Um, it was my last two weeks of high school. I was missing finals. I was on the verge of missing graduation, so I was upset. I wanted to go home. Like, I wanted to get out of that hospital, but I couldn't because I couldn't eat. Um, I couldn't do the liquid diet. I couldn't do any of the diets. If you ever been to the hospital, you know the steps. There's all these diets they put you on, right? So, um, long story short, uh, my sister, one of my sisters, you know, convinced me to try to eat and not throw the food back up, try not to throw it up. And I did force myself to start eating. They put me on potassium IV, which was excruciating pain. Um, if you guys never had a potassium IV, it's like literal acid in your veins. It's so painful. So I had potassium IV, then they put me on potassium pills. And after eight days, I was finally able to go home. And I went home and thank God I made it to graduation and, you know, I was able to make up my exams and walk for graduation. So that was that. Um, but till this day, anyone who goes out with me, go out to eat, they know that Tracy does not eat much at all. I will order an appetizer and I won't finish it because I can't. I'll eat one meal per day because literally one meal I will be eating at it throughout the day. I can't eat a whole meal. Um, some people like that because they get, when they go out to eat with me, they know they're going to eat more than me and they're not going to spend much money because I can't eat. Um, but that's, that's dealing with early society. You're always, always freaking full or you get full quickly and you're easily nauseated. Very easily nauseated. I went to the doctor and the doctor was like, well, for one, there's, there's no cure for it. It is what it is. She said, we can, you know, you can get, go get your stomach stretched, but I wouldn't recommend you get your stomach stretched because there's really not a need. As long as you're eating, you're alive, you're surviving, you should be fine. So that's that. That's life dealing with early satiety. And no, you don't stay skinny because I'm still a thick chick, okay? I'm not fat, but I'm, I'm not skinny either, okay? So you still add weight. It's not the amount that I eat, since I don't eat much. It's what I eat that makes me gain weight. And when I change what how I eat, I lose weight rather quickly. So that's life dealing with early satiety. If you've never heard of it, you can read up. Maybe you suffer from it and you don't know. But you just can't eat a lot, and it's frustrating because you're always losing out on vitamins and stuff, so you have to be put on multivitamins. But that's life. <laughs>